But as I was saying, people, like, I said I got some stories to tell you about that, but I got to give you some backstory a little bit. You know, I was chasing after success. You know, I'm in the military. I wasn't the best Marine. I wasn't. I, I, I was just going through the motions. I, I didn't see myself doing a lifelong endeavor in there, so I wouldn't let them change me, so I stayed as much to myself as I could. I never even got promoted. The highest level I got was E3. It really didn't bother me. I didn't care. I didn't care about it. But I noticed something. Even without rank, I still gain a, a sense of respect from certain people just because of how I was. I was more humble in the military than I was in the world. I ain't gonna lie to you. It wasn't even about money. We believed in, you scratch my, not scratch my back, I scratched yours, but we looked out for one another. We did, and when I got into the world, that changed. I'm not saying I wasn't in the world of the Marines, but it was different. I taught, I got taught some great values in the Marines. And it wasn't really about money. I didn't really care. A little paycheck to paycheck. I wasn't never overflowing with money. But I had everything I needed and I was okay. I never wanted, I didn't even want a car when I was in the military. Everybody else had cars. I'm like, forget it. I don't need them. Then when I got in the world, man, my mind started changing a little bit. It started being bitter. You know, I wanted to rise up the chain, make more money. And I started getting promotion after promotion, everything I signed up for. My whole goal was to become successful. Mm -hmm. Promotion after promotion. Then I got fired. I was like, wow. Then all the money started decreasing. But when I had the money, I was a big headed fool. Thought I was better. Look at me. Every time I got something new, I wanted to show everybody. The deceitfulness of riches. Having a form of gardens, but denying the one another. What you think that means? Because it's all about self. Success is something that you measure inside. It's a selfish act. And we measure, if you measure success by wealth, it's a dangerous game, people. You'll never have enough. You'll never have enough, man. But I was bigoted. I was, man. And I didn't even see how bad I was until I got broke down. And even when I gave my life to God, I still thought, I was like, well, I lost things, so everything's going to come back now. I'm going to get rich now. Because a lot of the teachers I listened to, that's what they talked about. How to get rich with the Lord by your side. That's what a lot of people use the word of the Lord for to convince people this is how you get successful. As long as you got God by your side, you're going to be a successful, rich person. And that's not even the case, people. Once I started studying that word and realizing what rich means, it ain't a financial thing. It's not a material thing. It's rich in spirit. So there are many rich people that don't have money walking around this earth. But that's how we look at it. We look at the rich, we're like, oh, but I work for a company, man, and I see the problems they face as being the manager of the company boss. They are constantly trying to find ways to make more money. And that's their driving force. Not necessarily to help other people, but mainly to help themselves. The employees still making the same minimum you know, it's like you pay attention to employers. You know, they get slack on work. Now you can't work because they only want enough money to survive to provide for themselves. They forget about other people, and that's what I don't want to be. I don't want to be somebody that that God increases financially that don't help other people. Because you got to look at the outs. You got to look at the the needs of other people. You have to. If you gotta pay bills, you best believe as a, a employer, if you gotta pay bills, you best believe your employees gotta pay bills. You can't just assume they saving money just like you do because the cost of living is going up. 
Six hundred dollars a week used to take your fall. Now it don't. Now when milk five dollars a a gallon. Now when the prices of everything around you is going up, you know. You got to look out for the welfare of others. But what I see is when he's talking about your gods to their belly, as long as they eat, they really don't care about nobody else eating. Now, everybody that's rich is not like that. That is true. You know, I, I believe there's some God-fearing financial people out there that really help people. Just don't talk about it. They be about it. You understand? But look what he's saying, though. They, our prayers, think about your employees, employers that may mistreat you or don't give you what's due to you the thing why you say that because the bible says when it's in your power some of us ain't got that but a lot of employers do they can give somebody a raise or choose not to it's in their hand to do it you know yeah you're supposed to be content with things that you such have but you gotta as an employer you gotta know when to help somebody else men to give them that bonus and stuff like that because there are things that God wants us to do with more. To whom much is given, much is required. I use that for spiritual and material or financial. If God increased my bank account, all right, that means I gotta help more. I gotta do more. Same way with these church leaders. Let's put it this way. Let's take a church leader, boy. God has increased their church, can increase their house increase their pockets right so that they have lack of nothing but you're still they big and big they still they big and big they got enough money to pay the light bill at the church out of their pocket but they rather big the congregation put the burden on them I talked about this in regards to your house your spiritual house I'm not expecting nobody else to take care of my my house I'm not expecting somebody else to pay my bills. Because if you're the leader of that church, that's big, it's a big church, right? If you're the leader of that church, that's your business. You take care of it. You understand? You take care of it. You know. Their house getting bigger. Just think though. You keep a small house with a big church. That means where the money goes into the church. You keep that car until it's time for to get a new one. You ride until the wheels fall off. You know, but us in this world, people, we are greedy. We, as a whole, we get one car, let's get another car. You got seven cars in the yard. You got a cousin that's struggling, and you see he's struggling. And you just give him advice. <laughs> Ain't that crazy? That's like the parable when somebody comes to knock at your door asking for bread. And you got it, but you don't give it to them. You see, because people will get to that, we get pride for, I worked hard for this. I'm not going to just give it to you. I'm not going to just hand it over. Because I had to work for it. Well, God made it gave you the gift to be able to do that. Now it's time for you to give. Time for you to help somebody else. Same as I have helped you. You know, but I was like, I ain't going to lie to you, I wasn't stingy. But I looked at it from a different perspective. You know, it was all about me, me, me. Like I help somebody some if they ask me. But I wasn't just willingly helping folks. You understand? I wait for them to ask. You know. But you know, you gotta be careful with your funds too. People will take advantage of you because you got money. Because you can't just hand money out there. I understand why a lot of rich people are the way. Because you can't just hand it out. You got to use discernment. But that's where God comes into play. If God sees you managing your funds well. And doing right things by his kingdom. He will increase your funds. But it's the deceitfulness behind that. Not the deceitfulness behind God. But don't get that to that point where God is increasing you. And then you go back to how you were. You go back to, you forget what your whole purpose was about. You know, yeah, people come to my house for fun and food and stuff like that. But they, well, that's all they was coming to my house for. They weren't coming to my home for 
nothing else besides that. Y'all okay? Okay. But you know, you have to look at things like that. Mm. But I was, I was more about worship me. Worship me. Like you like the fact that people depended on you. I did. I could help people when I wanted to and then throw it back in their face. That was me. Then I started reading the Bible. Let not your left hand know what your right hand doing. Don't sound a trumpet. Don't do your arm before me. And all these things start embedded in me. The desire to be rich started decreasing. You know. Not only because of that, because you have to do more. It's not that I'm afraid to do more, but am I ready? Am I really ready for riches to increase? Am I gonna be a responsible employer or something like that? Am I really gonna take care of people? Am I really gonna help people? I'm just gonna start helping myself again. And it's frightens me. Cause the fear of the Lord is beginning to understand. And I know how riches change a lot of people's behavior. And a lot of people are like, riches don't change me. I'm gonna tell you something, people. It is. That's a fact. It's gonna change you. You're not gonna be the same person. You know, it's like I go, I window shop a lot. I'm like, I want mind buying that shirt. Not because of the name brand, because I like it. But some of the things I just can't afford right now. So I know if I have riches increase, I'm gonna get some things that I couldn't afford before. So that's that's a change in me. But I don't want to be led by that. I don't want to be flashy. I'm scared to be flashy. <laughs> that sounds weird, don't it? Because when I was living for the world and not living for God, that's all I was about. I wanted the best outfits, the best car. I wanted to be seen. I wanted to drive up at the family parties. The different places, the people looking at me. I wanted my music blasting. The music I was creating for myself. For me. Now that the things have changed, I still kind of want the same things, but I want God's music blasting. That's why I make music for God now. I want God's names to be out there. Not just less, not necessarily mine. You understand? Yes, I'm still private. I still want to give credit for my music. Don't get me wrong. It's still in me. Some of that's still here. And I war against that. And we all war against it. You understand? I don't care what you are. None Christian Christian. You, you face that same battle. Everybody tell you the same thing. You know, I'm not like that. All right. You say that. One thing about God, he got a way of making you eat your words. Especially when you start comparing. I hope I don't be like that. Like, like I talk about Steve Harvey and many other rich pastors, but I'm like, dang, I can become one of them too. I talk about that stuff. And it's, it's, it scares me because I see them. I'll see how it went from spirit led to God is my help to I'm successful. This is how you do it. I don't sleep. I don't eat. I'm standing up all day trying to make sure my funds meet. That's why God said you know them by their fruits. And I don't want to be known like that. And I know you don't. It scares me. Like, I always grew up in a small church. And I started back going to church this year, little by little. And I go to a small church. And I like it. It's easier to handle. Mm -hmm. For me and my passions and my mindset. You understand? And I see the deceitfulness behind it. It's like. The same way I said, I want that, that nice outfit. I don't want to be portrayed as that. You know, I wish God would make it so I'm like, Ernest. I don't know if y'all remember this old TV show, Ernest. And uh, he used to wear the same outfit every day. Didn't care what nobody said, didn't care about nothing. I didn't even care about that. 
you know, and that, that's one thing I respect about the Catholic priest. They wear the same black suit. And I'm like, don't that make more sense? Every time I got to come in from a crowd, I got to have something fresh on, something fresh and new. I want the most simple garments you ever seen. It don't make no sense for me to look good. My congregation don't. Oh, my congregation looking good too, but struggling financially because they're trying to look good. Trying to look like me. <laughs> then you read the Bible, how Jesus dressed it. Wasn't fancy or nothing like that. Then he talked about how Solomon was not fancy. Then I read Solomon's story, how he was rich. And then he got so rich, he started building whatever his wives asked for. Eating from the tree over and over again. I look at things like that. I look at David. Get her to me. Like, wow, am I going to be like that? The rich and the free just see a nice woman I like and be like, hey, go get her. Stuff like that bothers me. And you know what the thing is? I'm not saying a lot of poor people don't think like that too. But I'm going to tell you, rich people, they do. Like I look at Will Smith's situation. I, if, I wonder if, he, if he wasn't rich, would he have an open marriage? <laughs> would he agree to such a detail? In regards to his marriage. You know, and I see it all the time. Even in Hollywood and not just Hollywood, I see it in the churches too. Preachers sleeping with multiple women. All kind of stuff. I ain't saying all of them do it, but it's like something about being rich financially makes you feel like you can do anything you want. And I don't want to do anything I want. I want to keep the Lord first and foremost in my life. I don't mind a little simple eat, drink, and be merry. As long as I got a washing machine and certain basic things, food in the table, I want to be content with things as I such have. I don't want to have to chase after riches. That's how I was. Chasing after success. And that's when God hit me like a ton of bricks. Bow. Then I started seeking God. And then when I saw, when I found him, I was like, shoot, God finna give, give, give my riches back. Not knowing he was going to enrich me in the word. He was going to enrich, enrich me in behavior. He was going to enrich me in my actions. It's a lot of attributes I had before I gave myself to God was there were righteous attributes that I didn't even know I had until I started reading the Bible. One of my best attributes, I'm just Ever since I was young, God always told me not to mess with married women. Even when I was a fornicator, that was one thing not to go for. And that was it was in me. I'm like, you read the word, okay, I see. Adultery is wrong. That was already in my heart. I didn't like stealing. You know, I wasn't a thief. I'm like, wow. But then I started reading about the lust of the eyes and like just looking at a woman and like, God, leave her. Woo! It's hard to strict. And I don't want pride to take over. And I don't want pride to take over none of, over none of you. I'm telling you people. It's a dangerous game that we play out here. And we think God don't see it. Thoughts of adultery. Thoughts of fornication. Like take man, like I respect Donald Trump as a president. I respect all our presidents, but I still see certain things they do wrong just because they are leaders and they're rich. Doesn't mean you don't see the error in them. You saw it. In the scripture I just read the thing. You would be surprised how many people are praying in their homes and working for employers that are just taking advantage of them using them and they crying not to the Lord behind closed doors and their prayers have reached the Lord you think the Lord ain't gonna do nothing about it he will and he is but they calling on him for help but they see you know I've realized something in this world people like people are like Lord just help me 
All right, that's easy. Help you what? Help you what? A lot of times God reveals truths to you, not for you to react to them, but for you to pray. And that's why he leads the prayer right after that in James. Pray for people. Pray for your job. Pray for your president. Because eventually he's going to make it work. Make it right. And the thing is, you know how many people may die before they see the change come? But that's the hope we have in Christ. He wants us to see evil and pray at it. You see, this new Christian thing, uh, I don't want to see no evil. Well, you don't want to see no change. Do you understand? You don't want to see change because we live in an evil world. You're going to see it. But what are you going to do about it? And then sometimes after you start praying, God going to make you the help. The Lord say, I'm a present help in time of need, right? That's what, he said, what his word says. I'm a present help in time of need. What do you think that means? Now think now. If God works through you, God's going to start transforming you to a present help in time of need. He's going to make you that. Let me pause and I will continue.